Hey folks, welcome to this week's edition of Brush Pile Fishing. We're actually at my home lake, Grand Lake St. Mary's here in Ohio today. We're gonna to be concentrating on shallow cover, of course. We're gonna be working some brush piles, some rocks, and some aluminum lifts. So you stay tuned, we'll be right back with Brush Pile Fishing. Many people look at a lake and feel a sense of calm serenity. Crappie fishermen feel the heart-pounding anticipation of the thump. That's why host Russ Bailey is addicted to crappie fishing. It's this addiction that takes Russ from the Midwest to the Deep South in search of the best lakes, techniques, and patterns from some of the best crappie anglers in the country, right here on Brush Pile Fishing. getting started this morning folks and we got the good old Ohio winds a howling again. It's not too bad where we're starting out at but it's pretty stout anywhere else we go today. I'm going to start out on a lift. This is a time of year where you can sometimes get them on lifts and also in the rocks. So we're going to hit a couple different types of shallow cover and just see where we can find some. We might also have to sort through, you know, a lot of smaller fish, but I'm not going to put a whole lot of action on the jig because cold water, we're in the upper 30s right now as far as water temperature goes, and that's pretty cold, so fish aren't going to chase a whole lot, so we're just going to slow things down. With this wind, I'm kind of just letting the Waves do the jigging for me. I'm moving a little bit, but not too much. The other thing, you want to work the outside edges of these sea walls and just kind of work your way onto the inside. A lot of bars going underneath the water. And with as lethargic as the fish are too, you notice I'm making several casts in the same area just to make sure they're not there before I do any moving. First one of the morning. Not a pig, just a good keeper. About a 10 inch crappie. And this is a black crappie. This is predominantly what you'll get here in St. Mary's. And oh, he is cold. Pretty fish still have good color to them for as cold as the water it is. We've had a sunny morning, so I'm hoping it'll push those crappie into the rocks because that's going to be a little bit warmer, especially the longer that sun's out. And I think I'm going to put the old power poles down just to stop me. Now I started out with like a lime color. I went to a black and chartreuse, which is anything with chartreuse is normally good on this lake. And black and chartreuse, just like anywhere else, that's one of the staple colors. We'll see how it does here. Like I say, all we're doing is working the stretch of rocks real slow. Because if you work them too fast, you're not going to catch very many fish. They're not going to chase anything right now. If you put it in front of their face like that one's doing now, they'll hit it. And even there, you've seen how light that bite was. Work it back a little bit more. And that was key there anyways. Now that fish was out off the bank. A lot of the same size right now, about 10 inch crappie. And here in Ohio, except for Lake Erie, they've got to be nine inches uh, before you keep them. And on our lake, there's a limit of 30. That's a small one there. That's probably a nine inch or eight and a half. What I was talking about earlier, folks, is when they're hitting at this light and then you've got a wind like this, if you get a bow in your line, you go to set the hook and it doesn't give you a good hard hook set. So try best you can to keep that line tight. Not easy. About five years ago, six years ago, you probably read all about the, the blue algae problem we had. The blue algae is gone. Um, we still have 
algae in the lake, but I'll tell you what, the fishing has been incredible to where I'll put our lake up against anything in Ohio, both for numbers and size. Now we haven't caught any big ones yet this morning, but we will, we're just gonna have to sort through. And that's what happens when the wintertime fishing starts. All those fish start to move up in the shallows again. And that's what's going on now. And there's just so many smaller ones in there right now. Here in our lake, you can tell when the water temperatures are in the 30s because that's when the fish will move into the rocks more than anything else. And that can be a fun time of year to fish because they're so concentrated. There we go. He's outside of the rocks a little bit, not up on the bank. Made a little color change. Went to a pink head and a purple and chartreuse. Again, a lot of 10, 11 inch fish, but not getting any of them big hogs yet. There we go. Oh, there's a good fish. There we go. That is a nice fish, folks. That's what we've been after. Come here. Get in here. There we go. That's a hog. <sighs> big old thick across the back. And you can see. I made several flips in that same area just to get him to hit. That's a good fish, good cleaner, big old belly. Stay tuned for more brush pile fishing action. B&M Poles. That's a three pound crappie. The number one crappie pole company in the world. Got it. Whether you're jigging, trolling, pulling, or pushing, B&M has your pole. My signature series rod. Third generation family company with over 70 years experience. Home to the Bucks Graphite Jig Poles. The first and best selling graphite jig pole in the U.S. for over 35 years. B&M Poles, the number one crappie pole company in the world. Hey folks, Russ Bailey here for Brush Pile Fishing. We are here in Kentucky at Cornfield Crappie with Mark Riddle. Mark, how we doing? Good, Russ, how are you? I'll tell you what, you just rigged our boat. Absolutely great products you have. Can you tell the folks about all you have to offer? We got our monitor mounts. We got a new bridge. The thing we've done the most with has been the cable saver. We've actually sold them worldwide. We got them out to put the live scope on the trolling motor. There you have it, folks. Cornfield crappie. If you want the boat that looks good, cornfield crappie. Brush Pile Fishing is brought to you by these outstanding sponsors. B&M Poles, over 70 years of quality and performance. War Eagle, built for hunters who love to fish. Suzuki, the ultimate four-stroke outboard. Slimeline, catch the fever. Crappie Magnet, sore lip them all. And that's what this lake can offer in the winter time. A lot of guys will ice fish. I don't do that much anymore, but until that ice comes on, you can get some really nice fish. And again, it's good to run into some people you know on the lake and give you a few pointers. Look at there. And folks, with this bobber system, you can really slow down your presentation. Because like I say, if you move it too fast, those fish are not going to hit. This is another good fish. But if you slow everything down, almost vertical jig that with those bobbers. Another dandy hitting that crappie magnet. That's the red and chartreuse. Another good, good fish. I think the key was definitely going deeper, four foot deep. That's where these bigger fish are coming from. Like I say, it doesn't get much simpler than what we're doing now. A small cork, 32nd ounce jig, and a good old crappie magnet. Just kind of making our rounds. We're catching one or two here and there and move, but one of the good things about this lake in the shallow water, you can go right back to some of the areas you've already hit 
give it a little break, go back, and hopefully catch a couple more. Let's check in with Russ for the Brush Pile Gear Check. Hey folks, Russ Bailey here. Thanks for joining me for today's Brush Pile Gear Check. Uh, as far as the rod we were using, this is my signature series. I like the 10 and a half, um, but it also comes in an eight foot. What I was doing today, several times we were making long casts with this rod, and then there were times where we were just making flips, almost like a bass fisherman fishing in the shallows. This rod is very versatile. You can do both. Again, I like the 10 and a half for this technique, but use the shorter rod if that's more comfortable. As far as the reel, we went with the Daiwa spinning reel, and I've got four pound, and this is the slime line clear. It's four pound, and the reason I use the clear in this because I'm not line watching. When I'm using this small cork we're gonna talk about, I'm watching that cork only, so I'm not necessarily worried about seeing the line jump. I wanna talk about this cork. This is a little ice cork. You peg it with a toothpick. Now, I like to tear all but a little bit of that toothpick off because like today, we had windy conditions, and that line will wrap around there and you'll have a mess. So chop most of that off, put it into where it's snug. If we were fishing this deep, okay, and those fish move shallower, all we had to do, just like that, slide it down, you've adjusted your depth. It's that easy. The other thing, you'll see how that thing is shaped. It kind of goes, tapers down. That way it goes into the water nice and easy on these finicky bites. And a lot of times what you would see is just that barely turning up on its side. When you see something like that, set the hook. As far as the jig, we were using a 1 ounce ounce crappie magnet jig head and these crappie magnet baits. I started out with a slab magnet because I like those baits. They're big bodied, but they wanted the slender uh, bait today. As soon as we went to the crappie magnet, we started picking up fish and you can still hear them going in here. The other thing that we had to do that was critical in the gear check is, you know, we get stuck in using our, a color that we like the best. Well, guess what? Today we had to change constantly. The sun would come in, and then the clouds would come in, the sun come back out. Uh, so we were constantly changing. Um, these come in a variety of colors, but they definitely wanted the crappie magnet baits today. Slender, good action, and we were able to detect that finicky bite. So that's today's brush pile gear check. There we go. That fish was out deep off the bank. See if we can get his big brother in there. I know I've said it before, before they are cold to the touch. Stay tuned. We're only moments away from more brush pile fishing. War Eagle Boats, the most versatile line of hunting and fishing aluminum boats available. We strive to overcome real hunting and fishing obstacles, which drives us to create better products in the future. Check out the Blackhawk 2170, the ultimate crappie fishing boat. Built on a 22-degree V-Hull and paired with a 150-horsepower motor, you get lots of space and performance. All War Eagle Boats are built to suit the needs of our customers, guaranteeing you a boat worthy of the investment. Visit WarEagleBoats.com to get your started today quality American made product at one of the best price points in the industry. Customer service that's second to none. More importantly, they flat out catch fish. The new home for your fishing needs is boneheadtackle.com. Get all the latest product information. Shop our new and improved tackle shop. We have baits for crappie, bass, striper, sand bass, saltwater and terminal tackle, bait styles and slim stick, stump bugs, brush gliders and bulk jig heads available. Check out our superior mono line, crankbaits for bass, and our top of the line carbon fiber fishing rods. Bonehead Tackle, family owned business with one goal in mind. Make fishing more fun and help all anglers catch more fish. Brush Pile Fishing is brought to you by these amazing companies. Grand Lake St. Mary's, Crappie USA, NKT.TV, Rockport Rattler, Power Pole, Bonehead Tackle, Cornfield Crappie. Well, those clouds have moved in and out today. And the one thing we figured out, there we go, is that those fish are deep. Here we go. Come here. It's not a bad one. 
not a trophy, but again, a good cleaner. And with those clouds, I've changed colors again. I've went to the, it's like a purple and chartreuse with a pink head. I like purple on this lake anyways. And then when you have dark days like this, I really like using purple. There we go. There's another one in the rocks. Found one little stretch of rocks here. Ooh, yeah. One little stretch of rocks. Get him in here. That has held three. That's about three fish and four cast, actually. There we go, folks. You hear my phone going off and everything else, but that's all right. You know, folks, as I'm getting rigged up here, on St. Mary's, a lot of times, uh, people fish anywhere from 18 inches, two foot deep, and sometimes it's hard to get them to go any deeper because most of the time you catch fish there. Today, we're finding them some shallow, some deep. Um, hopefully, we get into a few bigger ones and we'll figure out where they are. But we've changed not only depths, there goes a fish, not only depths several times today. Oh yeah, is that a bass? It's a bass. Look there. Hold still. b and bass pole there. But uh, we've not only changed depths today, but we've changed colors, uh, the way we presented it. Uh, we've changed a lot of things and just trying to put that pattern together. And sometimes in the winter, it takes a little work because that water's so cold, you gotta figure out what those fish want. There's a nice little large mouth. It, it's funny when we used to have the, you know, a lot of teams come in for our tournament trails and the teams, especially from the South, they would come in, they'd look at maps and we have very, very generic maps of the lake. And they'd be asking, so where are your drop offs and ledges and stuff? Because, you know, that's what most lakes are. We don't have those here. This lake was hand dug in the 1800s to support the canal system which ran all the way from Toledo all the way down to Cincinnati to the Ohio River. And that's how they got goods. They had horses up on the bank, pull these big canal boats. So this lake was built to support that. And it was actually hand dug. It's 16,000 acres, but it was hand dug by shovels. So it's like a bowl shape. It's about six foot deep average when it's full. And right now we're low. Um, and those guys that, that built this they got paid 25 cents a day and one shot of whiskey. Um, so that tells you it's been here for a while, but it's funny that the cover that we fish is mostly man-made cover. And we've tried a little bit of everything this morning. We've tried um, aluminum lifts. We found a few brush piles, but the main success, we've caught some off the lifts, but these rocky areas and a little bit deeper so far have panned out a little bit better. And like I say, the colder the water gets, they're really gonna start hanging in the rocks and that's when it can really be fun. Right before the ice actually comes on, it can be dynamite here. The Greater Grand Lake region is not just a great place to catch crappie, it is a fun vacation destination for the whole family. Grand Lake St. Mary's is Ohio's largest inland lake with 13,500 acres. There's plenty of room for boating, fishing, tubing, and skiing. Enjoy bird watching or a picnic along the shores of this beautiful lake. There are more than a dozen restaurants, clubs, and bars with lake access for plenty of good food, fun, and entertainment. Grand Lake St. Mary's also boasts two dog parks, three lighthouses, seven marinas, nine public launch ramps, and numerous campgrounds, cottages, and hotels. While in the area, explore the Armstrong Air and Space Museum, step back in time at historic Fort Recovery, Take a ride down memory lane at the Bicycle Museum, appreciate the peace and beauty of the Maria Stein Relic Shrine, or take a stroll along the Miami Erie Canal. The region also boasts plenty of hiking and biking paths, great restaurants, and fun and unique shopping. To get more information on visiting West Ohio's Greater Grand Lake region, check out seymour.org. Well, folks, right now, I'm going to make another color change. So while I'm doing that, you stay tuned. This will be a great time for you to hear from some of our sponsors. Stay tuned, we'll be right back with Brush Pile Fishing.
Introducing NKT.TV, a brand new solution for the cord cutting generation. With NKT.TV, viewers enjoy viewer specific programming with the ability to pick and choose the channels you wish to subscribe to. Missed brush pile fishing this week? Catch it on NKT.TV, along with all your other pursuit channel favorites. NKT.TV offers dozens of network and channel options for you, the viewer, to choose from. So go ahead, cut the cord, and get everything you want with nothing you don't. Visit NKT.TV today. want to introduce that the new brush pile fishing store carries all the gear that i use in the brush pile fishing show just go to www.brushpilefishing.com and check out the crappie shop and find jigs apparel line nets bnm poles and so much more in the sale and clearance sections you'll find deep discounts on the gear that will help you put more fish in your boat that's brushpilefishing.com it's been a finicky bike, but that's, that's another good thing about the crappie magnet. Even when those fish are finicky, they will hit that thing. If you watch a lot of our brush pile shows, you notice that I like using a high-vis line about 90% of the time. The one time that I'll use a clear is when I'm using the, uh, the cork system because I'm not really watching my line right now. I don't need to see it jump or anything. I am exclusively watching that cork. Um, not necessarily, like I said before, for it to go down underwater, but anything that's unusual, it's not sitting straight up or it's not moving the way that I'm moving it with the rod. If I'm not using a cork, I always like uh, using a loop knot, allowing that jig to swim more freely. But when I'm using a cork, I always cinch that line tight to the jig head because the movement that I get from the jig is what I'm putting on with the rod. I'll control that. And I've got a four pound slime line clear on right now, which I love. Man, you get casted and it is, it's like silk. You know, I talked about the fish are lethargic, not a lot of movement. With this 10 and a half, you can see I'm just barely bumping the tip and then letting it set. And most of my strikes have come when it's setting after I've moved it just a little bit. The other thing that we found in this channel today is the thread fin shad and that's their main forge here mainly about that size is where we're take it there we go same thing he didn't take that cork under just enough to let me know he's on there come here but even these smaller fish that's about a nine inch carp look at the belly on them they're nice and healthy and even for as cold as this water is they haven't lost a lot of their color yet There we go. Not bad. Ooh, not bad at all. Come here. Oh yeah. Good old chunker. Big belly. The other thing is spooked as these fish are. I'm trying to stay off that lift a ways. I don't want to get anywhere close to it right now. That's two fish off of it. That's a smaller one. Let's see if there's some more in there. One of the things too, and I don't know if the cameraman's picked it up folks, but I'm making, I went from casting this rod to just making long flips and just pinpointing where I want it to go. And that's one of the things with this rod, it was designed for getting into a specific area, getting as close to your target as possible. I think most of us, when we were kids, started out bobber fishing and it's still, after all these years, it's neat just to watch that cork disappear. And now we're just fishing the area in the rocks, casting up shallow and then just working it back. There's another one. Oh, that yeah, little boy's got a little fight to him. Oh yeah. oh yeah, not bad at all. Hold still. Look at there. 
another one on the purple. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed today's show on my home lake, Grand Lake St. Mary's. We went from sunshine to cloud sunshine, and now it's actually starting to rain a little bit. So we're gonna have to call it a day. You know, we caught great numbers of fish, and I think you could see that we had about every size you can imagine. And then there at the end, we caught a couple real nice ones, and that shows you what Grand Lake can do. So you stay tuned next week. We'll be back with Brush Pile Fishing. For more brush pile fishing excitement, find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram.